Have you guys ever wondered, how do I fix a motor on a uh, animatronic from Spirit Halloween? Everything animatronic, Spirit of Halloween 9. And welcome everybody to another Tech Tip Fridays. In today's Tech Tip Fridays, I'm going to show you guys, the audience, um, how to fix and clean a motor for any Spirit Halloween animatronic for today's Tech Tip Fridays. Okay, so some obvious things that you're going to need to do this, um, and this is goes for cleaning the motor, um, it can also be repairing the motor or just checking the motor out, but today's kind of going to be uh, cleaning the motor and just checking the motor out overall, not actually fixing the motor. Um, but I think some things you're going to need for this is you're going to need some kind of oil or some kind of lubricant um, using WD-40, um, but you can use... Um, I guess if you wanted to use <laughs> cooking oil, it's not really for this purpose, but if you want to use cooking oil you could, or 3-in-1 oil, you could use some of that too. You're going to need a screwdriver. This one is kind of a bad screwdriver, but it's okay. You just need a screwdriver with a Phillips head because most spear Halloween animatronics have a Phillips head type setup. And you're also going to need uh, some paper towels. Um, this is a bit excessive. All You, you really only need a paper towel like this. Um, Basically, that's all you need, so you don't need all this. So, um, anyway, guys, that's all you're going to need. Let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay, so as I've mentioned, this is going to be a cleaning tutorial on how to clean the motors in your Spirit Halloween animatronics. This could also go for fixing the animatronic and also just checking out the mechanism in general. So, uh, this mechanism is off of the Wheelchair Psycho. There's different mechanisms that um, vary from model to model, so this is not going to look the same like this all the time. But anyway guys, let's go ahead and get into fixing it. Um, first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, if you have something like this, um, you're going to want to remove the screw holding it in right here and that will, actually I'm sorry, two screws holding it in right here, I can't really see very well. And this will make it so that the spring comes forward. Uh, now you might notice there's a bit of black residue and that's just basically the oil or the grease that they put on this thing and the dirt mixing together. Also you're going to want to remove the rubber belt and the rubber belt is on this side and it's on like that. All you really do, let me go ahead and do this again to properly show you guys. So what you want to do is when your rubber belt's on like this just take the screwdriver. Don't poke the belt but just poke slightly underneath it, pull up and then out. And then it should come out just like that. Okay, so that's the mechanism as always. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take it off of the base here. Alright, so now that we have the module off for the motor box, this is what it'll look like. I'm going to go ahead, we're going to take this apart and I'm going to show you guys uh, some things to watch out for. Okay, so now that we have the mechanism taken apart, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and take these four screws. There's four screws in a module like this. There's four screws, these four right here. Uh, just un I'm going to go ahead and unscrew them. Whole thing unscrewed. Now we're going to go ahead and gently lift up, just very gently, and you can see the whole cover comes off. You can set that right there. Now here's the gearing. Um, obviously as I move this back and forth, this gear moves. Oh, it came out of track. So you can also see there's relay switches right here. So when it goes forward, it taps that. And there's one back here. Hopefully you guys can see that. It will move back and tap that. Um, now, something that I noticed with this is that the relay switches are all connected, like the motor and the two relay switches are actually connected to the same wire clip, and I can't remove the motor without removing the relay switches, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the relay switches. Um, make sure you know where these relay switches go when you're done removing them, or fixing them, or whatever you need to do to them, because if you don't, um, the animatronic will not work right and it won't function properly. Okay, so now that we have the motor, or now that we have the two relay switches and everything disconnected from the plastic here, 
Um, there is this plastic uh, motor hub, and this is what the belt connects to, and then it connects to the wheel hub that goes, that connects to the gearing inside here to make this um, work. So uh, you're going to want to take your screwdriver and you're going to want to stick it, and this goes for all animatronics, you're going to want to stick it um, inside the wheel hub and just very gently pry out. I know I look like I'm stabbing at it, but you want to very gently pry out because you don't want to break this plastic. If you break this plastic, the motor won't work. Uh, it'll, it'll still work, but if you try to connect the belt up, it's not going to work. So be very careful. Don't break this. Um, if you have extras and you don't care, you can, I guess, use other means of force to get it off. But if you don't, chances are most of you don't, um, don't try to break it because it's not going to get it off. But it comes off with such ease. I mean, it's hard to break it. Um, but some, if, if this is greasy or if this is, you're having trouble getting this off, just use a little bit of oil to get it off. Okay. All right. So now that the everything is disconnected, we can go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and slide the motor out. It tends to be caught on some things, but I'm going to go ahead and slide the motor out. With these, and there it is. So we have the motor here and the two relay switches. So that's always a plus. And here's the gearing. So we don't need this anymore. We can set that aside. Here's the motor. Um, I guess if. You know what, a good thing we probably would have is extra paper towels, so maybe you do need a couple extras, but just so you don't get grease everywhere. Something that you guys want to look for when you're taking apart these motors and putting them back together is the way in which the motor goes back together. The um, reason why I say that is because if you put this motor back together uh, wrong or backwards, um, because there's two magnets on the sides here that are different... Um, polarities, meaning north and south, um, if you put the motor cage in wrong, um, it'll actually spin the motor in the opposite direction, I found out. So um, make sure that the motor goes back together right. If you have a motor that looks like this, you're going to want to make sure you put it back together right. But if you have a motor that looks like this, it really doesn't matter. You could put it back together either way and it'll work just fine. Um, so. You're probably wondering, well, how, how am I going to know which way to put this back together once I've taken it apart? And that answer is very simple. A Sharpie or a pen will help you. What you want to do is take the Sharpie and go ahead and make a little mark on... Whoops, dropped the pen and now I have a pen and ink on my arm. Uh, but take your pen or marker and you're going to want to mark a dash right there. And so basically what this will do is this will let you know that when you take the motor apart... Basically, when you're putting it back together, just make sure you line the two dashes up and you will be all good to go. You want to bend these tabs out with a screwdriver or some kind of flat tool that's small. Go ahead and bend those out this way. And that will relieve the back of the motor, the motor, the back motor cover and the brushes. And we'll go ahead and get into further detail once I have this done. All right, so now that we've got that done, we're going to slowly pull out and the motor should very very easily come out. If it comes out like this, don't worry. As I can, as you can tell, there's two different magnets. There's this one and this one, and they're completely different, so don't think they're the same. Here's the core of the motor, or the stator, or I'm sorry, the rotor, which is the rotating part. Um, just pull this out. If the brushes won't let go, just keep pulling. All right, so there it is. Okay, so now that we have the motor taken apart, I'm gonna show you guys how to properly clean the motor. So you want to take your paper towel, and if you can look on here, let me go ahead and get some better angle for you, but if you look onto that motor shaft, you're going to see all that black stuff, and you're like, what in the heck is that? Well, that's actually the stuff that we're going to clean. So you're going to want to take your napkin, or your paper towel, or whatever, and you're going to want to pinch it like this. Okay? If you guys can see that, you're going to want to pinch it like this on the other end, not this end, but the other end, and you're going to want to turn the motor back and forth like this very slowly and you can see how a bunch of junk is already starting to come off and this will actually clean the brushes you can see how much cleaner that looks um, it'll clean the brushes and make it have better performance and the same thing applies to the brushes you also want to make sure the brushes are clean because if the brushes are not clean the motor will not receive power and it will not work and this is a brushed DC motor so you're going to want to take your paper towel you just used to clean the motor, the, this end of the motor, and you're going to want to take your screwdriver and you're going to want to put it like this and fold it over 
And then once you have it looking like that, fold it down on the sides and it'll form kind of like a little brush cleaning thing almost. And you're going to want to go inside of the brushes right here. Here's what the blush brushes look like. See they're all dirty and nasty in there. You're going to want to take your screwdriver and you're going to want to stick it right in the middle of the brushes and just rub around on the top of the brushes just very slightly. You don't want to break the brushes. If you break the brushes, um, the motor won't work. Look at all that junk coming out. This is all from the brushes, not from the motor. So you can tell these motors build up a lot of junk. And if your end gets too dirty, just go ahead and repeat the same process. And basically just repeat this until uh, you don't see a whole lot more dirt coming off. Alright, so now that the brushes are clean and they're all good, um, we don't need this anymore. Now we're going to take our WD-40. Now if you're in a enclosed area, you're going to want to open up a window. If you're using this inside, I highly recommend you use this outside because it's very strong and the scent that it gives off is very bad. And it even says um, not to use it inside. And if you're going to use it inside, make sure you use it in a very well ventilated area. You're going to want to take your WD-40 and you're going to want to spray the end brushes right here, so you're going to want to spray this part of the this back part of the motor and this part of the motor, and you're also going to want to put a couple drops in here inside of the motor part, right there, okay, uh, through that hole in the center of the cage. But you're also going to want to spray a little bit of WD-40 where these brushes are. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reinstall the motor and we're going to line up the two marks on the plastic and on the motor state uh, cage. And we're going to put it back together. Now how you put this back together is you don't push forward, but you want to separate the two brushes. It's kind of hard to explain. But just go ahead and separate the two brushes just like that and push down. And there you go. Motor is all back together and lubed up for its next run. Um, pretty much, now it's just basically the reverse, so I'm going to bend these two tabs back into place to hold the cage down. You want to do this. So we're just going to pop the motor back into place. Just like that, make sure it's fully popped into place. And we're going to go ahead and reinstall the relay switches. Um, just like so. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to reinstall this. Now remember what I said, this B or whatever letter this is, is facing this rounded lobe on this particular animatronic, the wheelchair psycho. Okay, so that looks pretty good right there. Does not need, does not need to be perfect. And now we're going to go ahead and reinstall the plate right here, the main plate housing. Now this should just click into place, and if it doesn't, it's already clicked in. There we go. Okay, we're gonna go ahead. And, I'm gonna go ahead and screw the four screws in. All right. So now that we have the entire mechanism put back together exactly the way it should, we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this the the um, motor hub, and you basically just push that down until. It and the wheel hub are basically lined up just like that. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the belt as well so we don't have, uh, so it's easier to work on this. If your hands are greasy, make sure you wipe them off before you reinstall the belt, otherwise, you're going to notice your animatronic isn't going to be as powerful as it was. All right, go ahead. Now, you're going to want it when you have springs like this, you're going to want to reinstall it in the very last hole. So push in, push down. We're going to repeat the same for this side of the animatronic. Alright, so now that we have all that done, make sure to not leave this stuff on your bed. 
or on your workspace. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to install this this way. Alright, so guys, that is pretty much it for putting this thing back together. That's basically the entire setup. Um, let's, I'm going to go ahead and plug her body in and we're going to go ahead and test this out and we'll see if it works. Okay guys, so I have the wheelchair psycho plugged in. Uh, I don't have her volume on. But she is plugged in and everything is all good, so I'm going to show you guys that this repair works. Alright guys, so this repair does work, um, uh, very simple repair, not hard to do, you only need a few things to do it, and I know a few things you can actually substitute. Like I said, all you really need to do this repair is some oil, I used WD-40 in this video, uh, a paper towel, and a screwdriver and a pen, and this is basically all you need to do this uh, repair. Alright, so guys, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you are new. If you guys found this video helpful, also give a, a thumbs up, basically leave a like. Um, and guys, as always, be scary, be spooky, and I will catch you guys on the flip side.